How to raise money for your real estate deal, the kite method. In a perfect world, you'll have all the money you would ever need for all of your real estate deals. But in a perfect world, you'd also have a six pack and could sing like Ariana Grande. So we know that this world is far from perfect. Now, while I can't help you with the latter, I can help you with the former, helping you raise money for your next real estate deal. My name is Brandon Turner. I'm the host of the Bigger Pockets podcast, over 70 million downloads, and author of the book on rental property investing. And today, I'm gonna share exactly how to raise money for your next real estate deal. In fact, I just bought this property by raising over 3 million bucks from 40 different investors in a real estate fund, and I'm gonna be doing a whole lot more of that in the future. So I thought I'd share with you a bit of what I've been learning, what I've been doing to raise money for my deals so you can raise money for your deals. And hey, if you find this video helpful, don't forget to click that little thumbs up button below the video. It helps us reach more people with life-changing content. All right, let's do this. First, let's talk about the number one most important fundamental truth about raising money. In order to raise money, you have to have a great deal. I mean, think about it. No one is gonna give you money for a deal unless they are getting something out of it. And they're not looking for a high five or a hug. They want profit, but so do you. So there's gotta be enough meat on the bone to go around for everyone. Therefore, the first tip in knowing how to raise money is knowing how to find and analyze good deals. Now, if that's something you struggle with, you're in luck. Every week at Bigger Pockets, we teach free online classes where we walk you through that very topic. Find more at biggerpockets.com slash webinar. All right, so assuming now that you have a good deal, now what? Well, let's talk about the fundamentals. There are really a couple ways to raise money, a couple different avenues. There's debt and there's equity. Now, don't get scared off by the fancy real estate terms. Let me break that down for you. Debt simply means you're borrowing money from somebody, usually at a predefined interest rate. In fact, I just bought a triplex here in Maui and I borrowed money from a business associate for the deal. Good friend of mine, actually. And that was debt. I owe him money every single month, no matter how good or bad that property does. Now, equity on the other side is more like a partnership where the person giving you the money participates in the ups and downs financially of the deal. Now, early on in my career, I wanted to buy this property. Problem was I had no money or ability to get a loan. So instead I raised the money. I went to a friend who, and asked him to become an equity partner. He brought the down payment, it was about 30 grand. We split the deal, profits 50-50. So if you're looking to raise money, you'll have to decide if you're gonna raise money via a debt method, like borrowing money from a bank, a company, an individual, or the equity method. Now, although it's possible to offer your investors a little bit of both, it's not quite as common, so we're not gonna worry about that right now. Instead, we're gonna focus a little bit more on the equity side today, so that's much more likely where you'll be headed. Most investors that you might wanna raise money from don't just want a flat interest rate. They wanna participate in the success of the deal. So let's talk about that right now. But before we go any deeper, let's talk about something a little bit, maybe even more important. Why should somebody invest with you? Because in the end, this actually matters more than the deal itself. Now hear me out on this. I know I just said knowing how to analyze and find a good deal is important, and it is, but people don't invest in a deal, they invest in you. They invest in your ability to make the deal happen. I mean, think about it. If I gave the world's best real estate deal to my three-year-old daughter to run it, how well is that gonna work out? Probably not very well, but it would have ponies and unicorns all over it. Now in my experience, if you want to raise money, you must be able to demonstrate that you have the four basic human principles I'm about to outline. I call it the KITE method because it's an acronym and I like acronyms. So here we go, write this down. Number one, K stands for knowledge. Do you have the knowledge needed to pull this off? If you're brand new, you might not. The good news is information's everywhere and usually it's free. So start reading books, listening to podcasts like the Bigger Pockets podcast, taking other investors out to lunch, asking questions, and focus your knowledge. Ask yourself, are you the number one smartest person on this topic in your area? If not, and you're not, keep learning. Number two, integrity. Integrity means doing what you say you're gonna do, no matter what, no matter what. And it's not just integrity for those around you, it's integrity when no one else is looking. When you say you're gonna wake up at 6 a.m. and go jog, do you just hit the snooze button and lie to yourself? When you say you're gonna finish that project at work, but five o'clock comes and you're not quite done, do you stay late, maybe even all night, just to finish it? Because integrity means doing what needs to be done no matter what all the time. It means people can trust you with their money because you've been trustworthy with all areas of your life. One of my favorite sayings of all time, how you do anything is how you do everything. So start living a life of pure integrity. 
Now, number three, the T stands for tactics. Real estate investing, while simple, is not always easy. I mean, you have to have a plan and can demonstrate exactly how you're going to make a return on the investor's money. You know exactly how you're gonna make the deal turn a profit, who's gonna manage the deal, what kind of legal entity you're gonna use, what happens when things go bad, or what happens when things go good. When will investors make their money? How much money can they expect? These are all answers that you need to know the answer to to be able to communicate them to potential investors. That's the tactical side of things. And number four, E, experience. The number one predictor of success is not what someone says they're gonna do, but whether or not they've done it before. Experience speaks volumes when trying to raise money, and for good reason. In the beginning, you don't know what you don't know. And I mean, many don't even know that they don't know what they don't know. So how do you handle that when you're just getting started? Well, a couple ways. One, you can gain experience on a small deal, like smaller deals on your own before you start raising money. Borrow money from banks or hard money lenders before you start borrowing money from other people. Or start with friends and family who don't really care about your experience because they've seen your experience in other areas of your life. Or third, borrow somebody else's experience. I'll give you a real life example of this. So recently, as I mentioned, I started raising money for some big real estate deals. But because I had never done a large syndication or a real estate fund before, I decided I needed some more experience on my team. So I brought in a super experienced investor named Brian Murray to my team, a guy who has a ton of experience investing in large real estate deals. And because I'm trying to buy mobile home communities, I also brought in Ryan Murdoch, who has a ton of experience managing mobile home communities. So I'm able to borrow from these guys' experience and it boosts my own. You can do the same thing. Yeah, you might have to give away some of your profit, but here's the question I had to ask for myself. I mean, let's say hypothetically I gave away half of the equity in my company just to bring in people who are way more skilled and experienced. Will I do more deals because of that? Or at least, will I do a better job with those deals? The answer for me was yes, a resounding yes, and it worked. I mean, my goal was to get to 1,000 units in three years. And here we are, six months in, we're actually in contract for over 1,000 units. That's the power of a team with experience. All right, so that's the kite method of raising money. Knowledge, integrity, tactics, experience. But now, I don't wanna just end it there. I wanna get into the nitty gritty on on how actually we were raising money and how you can do it as well. So let me give you um, 10 tips. Number one, keep it legal. When you're raising money, for real estate deals, you're, you're basically creating a security. So the, the US government monitors and controls how you can do that. And so here, when we decided to do ours, we opened up what was called a 506C fund. Other people open up a 506B fund. Now they're similar, but they involve, they're, they're basically involved which type of investor can you take money from. So for example, my 506C, I can only right now accept money from accredited investors. Accredited investors meaning people who have a good amount of money or a good amount of wealth. 506B, you can take money from some non-accredited, but you can't advertise. With the 506C, I can advertise or talk about it on videos. So knowing the correct legal way to do that is very important. Now, if you're just raising money from one or two people for a deal, maybe there's another avenue you're going. You're not necessarily gonna be doing a securities thing, but you're gonna wanna get the right paperwork together. So talk to an attorney, create an LLC maybe, or a corporation if that's what the attorney and CPA recommend, and make sure you cover your bases legally. All right, number two, you gotta network and talk about your real estate ambitions at events. I mean, nobody's going to naturally know that you are investing in real estate or that you're raising money. So your job is to go out there and tell people, meet with people, talk with people, tell them what you do and what you're trying to do. You know, real estate conferences are an incredible way to do this. We actually just got back a few weeks ago from the Bigger Pockets 2019 conference and it was amazing. It was such a great event of like a thousand real estate investors networking. And at that event, I met individuals who then later invested in my real estate deals. Why? Because I would tell them about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and what I believe. And I show them that the kite parts of my life, right? That I have the knowledge and I have the experience and the tactics and the integrity to be able to pull off this deal and the team. So talk about your real estate with people around you. Get around other people, attend local events. And if you don't have any local events in your area you can go to, go to biggerpockets.com slash events, E-V-E-N-T-S. And you can find a list of events in your area or you can start one. Number three, start an email list. 
Like you need to get in contact with these people regularly, so email is a great way to do it. So start an email list. There's a lot of service providers out there that can do it. Some of them cost money, some of them are free. But you wanna basically start an email list of potential investors and then communicate with them regularly. So when you're actually ready to pull the trigger on a deal, you have the email address of 10, 20, 50, 100 different potential investors. Number four, create a sample deal if you don't have one. Look, if you have a deal all ready to go and you're like trying to buy a property and you're raising money, you can actually show them the actual numbers of the deal you're doing. But if you don't have a deal yet, you can create a sample deal that allows you to talk with potential investors about the kind of deal you wanna do. So this is a, a property, this is one that we would have bought had we got to it earlier. And you can explain, you know, here's the numbers, here's what we would have bought it for, here's what we would have done with it, here's what your return could have been. This gives people a, a, a tangible reason to want to invest with you. They can see, oh yeah, this is what it'll be like, and then they can say, yeah, when you get another deal in the future, let me know. Number five, communicate regularly with your potential investors. You have the email list, you know them, email them regularly, talk to them regularly, communicate with them, show them the numbers, show them potential deals you're working on. You want to build relationship with these people because these are not just random investors, these are really partners of yours that you're going to be working with. So for example, in my syndication that we have, uh, we have a 506C fund, like I said, and there's a general partnership, which is me and Ryan and Brian and, and others that are in the team, and that's the general partnership. We are running the deal. The other side of that, the majority actually of equity goes to the limited partners. The limited partners are all those investors, so we wanna communicate regularly with the limited partners so that they feel, one, that we know what we're doing, that we're not leaving them out in the dark, and that they feel involved in the process. So communicate regularly with them will build trust. Number six, you may need to bring in a KP, stands for a key principle. So when you go to get a loan on a large real estate deal, a commercial real estate deal, typically the lender is gonna wanna see that you have the net worth, we call it the balance sheet. You have the net worth to, that's higher than whatever loan you're borrowing. So if you're trying to borrow $5 million, do you have a net worth right now of $5 million? And if not, in, in, in others in your general partnership do not have that net worth, you may need to bring in a key principal. We call it the KP. The KP is really somebody that you give equity to. Uh, you know, the, the percentage changes based on the deal, but anywhere from five to 15 or 20 percent, but it's a small amount of the equity, but all they really are doing is saying, look, I have money, I have wealth, I have net worth, that if something goes crazy, like I'm here, I'm rich enough to handle it. So that's what the KP does. If you don't know any KPs, start networking with uh, experienced real estate investors, experienced syndicators, people who are doing big deals. They can oftentimes be your key KP. Number seven, create a PPM and other legal documents. So earlier I talked about keeping it legal. Well now, in the process of raising money, you actually have to get all those legal documents. For example, in our fund, and in, in most, you're gonna create what's called a PPM. Well, you're not gonna create it. Your attorney, your SEC attorney is going to create this PPM document, which spells out everything about the syndication. Who gets what, how they get it, you know, what you're gonna be doing, and what all the risks are in it. So make sure you get that spelled out as well. Get your PPM and get that to investors to review. Number eight, have investors and yourself fill out all the required paperwork. So at this point, when you're ready to start actually raising money and accepting money, there's a lot of paperwork to be filled out. You need to get that PPM we talked about over to the investors, and then you have to get the investors to sign some of the legal documents that your attorney will prepare for you. Then you're gonna to wanna to have to countersign them, and you wanna make sure that everything's kept neat and organized. There's a lot of different software programs that can help you with this. We're using a company called Investor Deal Room right now, but there's a lot of companies that can help you organize all this paperwork and the signing of documents and all of that that goes into the legal side of raising money. Number nine, you gotta get the money wired. Now, if you're raising money in a big syndication or a fund like I'm doing, those individuals are all going to likely fund your bank account and then you're going to take all that money and buy the deal, send it to the attorney or the title company. Now, if you're doing a smaller deal, it's potentially, like if you're gonna borrow money from one, two, three people, maybe they'll wire their money directly to the title company. It just depends on what your attorney, what your closing uh, title company, or whoever's doing the closing for you, tells you to do. And number 10, once all the money's been in and you've got all the paperwork signed, you're going to close on the deal. But your job's not done. When you're raising money, you still gotta communicate with your investors continually, letting them know what's going right and what's going wrong at every standpoint. And at least monthly, send out statements showing how good or how not good the investment's doing. And that's it.
Raising money is not an incredibly complex process, but it is a sacred one. People are trusting you with their hard-earned money, and it's your job to make that money grow. So treat it with the respect that it deserves, and you'll see your investor pool grow over time, giving you a greater and greater ability to raise money for larger and larger deals. And hey, if you like this video, don't forget to click that little thumbs up button below and follow us over on all these social networks at BiggerPockets. And you can follow me personally at Beardy Brandon, Beard with a Y, over on Instagram. For BiggerPockets.com, my name is Brandon Turner, signing off. <laughs>